What's up guys? My name is Jeff Ray, feature guest host here at Weld.com. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about Anvaloy Weld Rods. Anvaloy is the internationally protected brand name of the product group based on tungsten alloys. These are available in various compositions such as Anvaloy 1050, 1150, 1350, and 1450. These are adapted to their respective application areas. They're also available as semi-finished products and finished products. Anvaloy also has a lot of products in the foundry and die cast industry with their Anvaloy solid material solution. The Anvaloy weld rod is a welding filler metal which is used to repair and where protection coating of cast molds is made from hard working tool steel in a TIG welding process. We're going to talk about the properties of Anvaloy products. It's increased resistance to thermal wear and burn cracks the increase in erosion or corrosion resistance, and extends service life significantly. The reduction of soldering. It improves the heat dissipation in the casting tools. When choosing what TIG torch to use, we want to go with a torch with the largest gas coverage area to shield the base material and the weld pool as best we can. You can utilize several different tungsten electrode types to weld Anvaloy weld rod. Most commonly used are the Violet E3, the Gold WLA15, and the Blue WLA20 tungsten electrodes. It is highly recommended to use the Violet E3 tungsten electrode as it has the highest service life. It is also more environmentally friendly, health friendly, and achieves the better welding result. The diameter of the tungsten electrode depends on the current during welding. For a low amperage range of 45 to 150 amps, a diameter of 1.6 millimeter is chosen and for a range of 75 to 175 amps, a 2.4 millimeter electrode is chosen. Always grind at an angle of 60 degrees to the tungsten electrode. If you want to weld with a 2.4 millimeter tungsten electrode with less than 75 amps, then grind a tip of 30 degrees. This will make the arc more stable. When grinding tungsten electrodes, keep the following points in mind. Grinding grooves must be a longitudinal direction of tungsten electrode. Grind the groove as fine as possible. Grind the tungsten electrode with a diamond disc, preferably mechanical. Do not grind the tungsten electrode on a belt sander or a slat. The cantilever length of the tungsten electrode outside of the gas nozzle is half the diameter of the gas nozzle in a standard version. With a gas nozzle opening of 10 millimeters, the maximum length of the cantilever is 5 millimeters. When using gas lines, the tungsten electrode sticks out up to 10 millimeters. Good gas protection is crucial. With properly adjusted gas pre and post, shock is very important. The gas preflow can ensure that no disturbing oxides are produced at the beginning. The gas post ensures that the hot tungsten electrode in the melting bath cools down in an inner atmosphere. In this way, oxidation on the weld and the tungsten electrode is prevented. The next welding layer can therefore be applied without any problem. After welding, the tungsten electrode must be clean. Two gases can be used, argon and a mixture of argon with up to 2% hydrogen. The second one can only be used for coat welding, not joint welding. Hydrogen is a reducing gas that has a strong affinity to oxygen. This means that the hydrogen is directly bonded to the oxygen so that no oxides form on the welds and the welds remain clean and clear. If you want to connect Anvaloy tungsten products to tool steel, never use argon hydrogen. The high carbon equivalent to 4.5 times of the tool steel will almost certainly cause cracks in the weld. Preheating can be done in three ways. Electrical, oven, and oxyacetylene. Oxyacetylene preheating or propane flames is the simplest but also the riskiest way of preheating. The biggest problem will be uniform heating. What we have here is an automotive casting die. I've got one chucked up in our rotary table. This is going to allow us to keep this part spinning so we don't target one area for the heat and it allows the whole workpiece to get hot. 
The surface needs to be absolutely clean and free of grease. Depending on the size of the workpiece, the surface must be removed by 6 to 15 millimeters. Do not start welding until the entire workpiece has the right temperature. Never preheat with a gas burner at the exact welding point. The workpiece absorbs hydrogen, which can lead to hydrogen embrittlement and cracks after welding. Maintain an inner temperature of 350 degrees Celsius during welding. Minimum temperature should be 275 degrees Celsius. This means that larger work pieces have to cool down too much to be reheated in between. It can also be useful to move the torch during welding. It is important that the movement during the weld does not exceed the diameter of the opening of the gas lens. We got the whole piece preheated here. What are we looking at in our weld spot? 400, so that's perfect. We're gonna be utilizing the 2.4 millimeter Anvoloi weld rod. We're also utilizing the E3 2.4 millimeter tungsten with the MK14 cup here. So large gas coverage there. We want a lot of gas coverage on this thing. So we're gonna start right here and fill her up. We got the machine set at 152 amps. The range on this says 175 max with this wire and tungsten size. So I can back it off if I need to a little bit, but I think this will be pretty good. Now we're going to talk about the up and down slope. The increase ensures that the set welding current does not apply directly but rises slowly. These parameters can be very important when building small pieces or sharp edges. The lowering ensures that when the TIG process is terminated, the current does not suddenly disappear but slowly returns to a minimum set point. This is to avoid having a crater hole or a fisheye in your weld. The time span of the current reduction is determined by the height of the welding current. With a high welding current the time span is longer than with a low welding current. Pulse welding is acceptable when using anvoloi weld rod as well. As you can see when I initiate the arc the upslope comes in real slow not too slow but the downslope is really where I'm letting it just feather back on that pedal and let that downslope come come down slowly. We don't want no cracking in this. TIG welding with Anvoloi is performed only on DC negative. There's a wide range of TIG welding equipment that can be used for this application. The choice depends on how large the workpiece is. When welding with high currents in long power cycles, choose a slightly heavier unit with a water cooling system. A smaller machine with the capabilities of 200 amps and is air cooled is sufficient enough for smaller workpieces. All right, we're just coming down to 290, 300, so we'll go ahead and get the torch back on it. Got to keep the heat in this thing. 350 to 360, 370. So, some more wire in here. It's a bit hot, so I'm going to utilize my other glove to rest my hand on here. The Anvoloi weld rod is more susceptible to corrosion of the wire tip and in the weld bath. It is therefore very important to maintain a gas flow time of approximately 5 seconds to prevent the welding baths from being contaminated. At the start of the weld, it is very important to hold the tip of the anvoloi weld rod inside the shielding gas area prior to the arc initiating. While welding, do not remove the tip of the weld wire from the shielded gas zone. As well as when you're finished welding, continue to hold the wire inside the gas coverage to ensure that it cools completely and that there's no oxide that can form on the end of the welding rod. The layer thickness during the welding depends to the chosen welding technique. If you add drop by drop, the layer thickness will be slightly smaller because the welding bath will drain a little more. If the anvoloi weld rod is held in the melting bath, the layer thickness will be higher with the technique. You must be careful to ensure that the melting bath flows well. All right, so I've got majority of this thing filled. Last thing I've got to do is the hard edges right here. Uh, it's not ideal to use that bigger size filler rod. So I went with the Anvoloi weld rod 1.6 millimeter. We're also gonna turn the heat down to about 100 amps and uh, yeah, get this thing finished up.
Now I'm going to use gravity to my advantage here because I was welding in the vertical like uphill on this inside I want it to lay a little better so I stopped it in the horizontal position I'll get in there lay a little bit in there on that corner and uh, we should be good here then we're gonna cool this thing down incrementally you can't just leave it let it lay and cool itself or else the welds can crack so it's been a couple hours now and our weld is cool I don't see any cracking no oxidation in the weld as we followed all the instructions from Anvoloy this really helps with production with not having to spend money on buying new tooling if it breaks or cracks as well as you can use this as a coating and the cast material actually doesn't stick to it as much as the actual tool steel does. Let us know in the comments down below if you've ever used the Anvoloy welding rod because this stuff has been around for about 15 years now. If you're interested in purchasing some Anvoloy weld rod, you can head over to anvoloy.com and check out some of their other products. But until next time, you can head over to weld.com and get connected with us directly through the member section. We'll see you later.